No matter what the temperature of the real estate market, no matter what type of property you're searching for, fixer upper, turnkey, or something in between, whether you're downsizing or upsizing, moving from the city to the country or vice versa, no matter what, you need to hear from a professional first. And, and I come to you for facts and truth. I've been wanting to have a conversation with you for a very long time. This is awesome. Before you do anything, listen to the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show, an advertising feature on AM800. Here's your host and broker owner, Dan Jemis. Okay, welcome back to the show. Yes, I am Dan Jemis in studio with me today, Joyce Blackmere, sales, uh, no, sales director with the yes. Dan Jemis Real Estate. <laughs> I'm so used to saying sales, uh, sales, sales representative, rep. uh, sales director with the Dan Jemis Real Estate team. Uh, and uh, today we're talking about uh, neighbors, yes. being a good neighbor, not being such a good neighbor, maybe on tomorrow's show. Uh, but today we're talking about uh, how to welcome new neighbors and make them feel at home. I think that's key. Right? Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. it's a lost art, I find, where, like you said earlier in the show, people don't want to communicate anymore. Or they want to wait till you know they find someone online and say hi that way. As or they just, just struggle to communicate. Sure. Or maybe they're maybe just, their intentions are different than they are perceived. Yes. Or executed. Yeah. Walk <laughs> over, shake a hand, say, hey, you know, hello, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> Won't you be I was my literally about to do that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, so listen. How to welcome new neighbors uh, and make them feel at home. On the list, start with a friendly introduction. Gee, the simplest way to welcome someone is just to introduce yourself. Knock on their door with a smile. Share your name. Let them know which house you live in. A personal introduction goes a long way. Yes. Not too complicated. No. Nope. Just a nice little friendly hello. Number two, bring over a, a small welcome gift. Yes, gifts are always nice. Yeah. little gesture can make a big impact. Consider bringing over baked goods, a plant, or a smell, a sm not a smell, a small <laughs> housewarming gift. It doesn't have to be expensive, just something thoughtful to break the ice. Love that. Uh, share local tips and information. So help them get settled by sharing useful information about the neighborhood. Give them recommendations on nearby restaurants, local shops, parks, and other community spots they might enjoy exploring. So maybe, hey, garbage day is whatever day, recycle day, you know. Yep. Whatever day. Whatever day. Whatever day. Snow days. <laughs> fog uh, days. <laughs> fog days. <laughs> These days, yeah, holy moly. Yep. Um, offer to help with moving in. Now, whoa, whoa. Okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that close. I can... <laughs> Oh, uh, if you see them struggling with boxes or furniture, offer a helping hand. So maybe just one box or one piece of furniture. I'm kidding. Uh, even if they don't need help, then the offer itself shows that you're approachable and willing to assist. Go over and needed. introduce yourself and then stand there and watch them struggle. Watch them move. <laughs> Get in the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Create a neighborhood welcome basket. I love this idea. So like like they used to do for... Um, the welcome wagon. The welcome wagon, yeah, right? Yeah. So for a more elaborate welcome, consider assembling a basket with local treats, maps, and contact information for services like garbage collection or utility companies. You could even include a list of local events or farmer's markets. So yes. again, that takes a bit more effort to do something like that, but... You know, that would mean quite a bit to a neighbor, I would think. I think so, because we have such amazing events in Windsor-Essex. Like do. For people to know about them and where they are, when yeah. they are, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Um, exchange contact information. So let your new neighbor know that they can reach out to you if they need anything. Giving them your phone number or email for emergencies is a great way to establish a line of communication. Sure. So here's my number. Yep. Um, organize a neighborhood gathering. So if you're in a close-knit community, now this, this happens quite a bit, organizing a small get-together like a barbecue or a block party can be a fun way for new neighbors to meet others in a relaxing setting. Invite a few other neighbors to uh, make them feel more in, uh, integrated. So that's a good kind of way. Maybe even do a, an annual neighborhood block party. Maybe people can take turns yeah. hosting and nothing complicated, just a barbecue and... Get there's the there's to, a lot of, or a few different things I've seen in the past. Like I've seen like neighborhood yard sales where everybody gets together and it just, it's a community feel. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little get together. Yeah. Right. A way to kind of see each other and get to know each other. Uh, introduce them to other neighbors. So if you're out walking and see another neighbor, introduce the new neighbor to them. Building those early connections will help them feel more at ease in the community. That's a good idea. 
give them a tour of the area. So if time allows, offer to show them around the neighborhood, point out key places like uh, the grocery stores, the pharmacies, and community centers. This can help them uh, get acquainted with the area faster and feel more at home, especially if someone's from out of town. Right, and we have more and more families moving into, into this area sure. from GTA or London or what have you. Yeah. Um, most definitely, that could be no doubt a really nice gesture. Little you show show what the library is and all the community uh, services, and mm-hmm. yeah, for sure, the best uh, best spots. Uh, respect their space and timing. So this is big too, right? While it's great to be friendly, also be mindful that moving can be stressful. Some people may need a bit of space to settle in. If they seem overwhelmed or busy, leave a note with your contact info and let them uh, know that they can reach out whenever they're So don't stand and watch. Don't stand and watch. (laughs) Don't get in their way. Right? But just a little hello and, um, you know, here's my contact info. Uh, So, again, so share local community group info. So let your new neighbors know about any local Facebook groups, uh, neighborhood watch programs, or community associations that they might want to join. It's a great way for them to stay informed and feel connected. Uh, law, offer lawn and garden advice or, you know, show them a lawnmower and say, Hey, come cut my lawn anytime yeah, you want. Anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. Uh, bring over a meal. Moving day is hectic. And the last thing on anyone's mind is cooking a homemade meal or even a takeout from a favorite local spot can be a wonderful and practical gesture. That's a cool idea. Yep. Nice. Hey, I'm all about the cookies. Bring me some kind of dessert. Yeah. Our neighbor um, is amazing. He has a beautiful garden yes. and he brings us over produce on a regular all basis. All the time. Yep. It's so lovely. Nice. <laughs> no work and you get to appreciate yeah, right. it. Right. Right. He, he loves to do it. So we're like, well, what are we, oh, who are we to get Can't in your say way? No. I want to be rude. <laughs> right. Uh, welcome them with the card. So if you're pressed for time and don't feel comfortable stopping by, a simple welcome card in their mailbox can be just as effective. So let them know you're nearby if anything uh, is needed. So again, if you're just joining us, we're talking about how to welcome new neighbors and make them feel at home. Uh, Share information about local schools and daycares. Uh, So if your new neighbors have kids, sharing information about local schools, daycare centers, or after-school programs can be incredibly helpful, especially if they're not familiar with the area. Um, So I love this one. Organize a walking group or play date. So Mm -hmm. if you have, if you or others in the neighborhood have kids, invite the new family to join a walking group or play date. It's a great way for parents and kids to start forming friendships, which when your kids are small, we were there, you know, at one point where parents, uh, if they're just sitting at home on mat leave or something, it's a great way to connect and meet other parents that are kind of in the same boat and might not have as many connections or friends uh, in the neighborhood as they've just uh, just got in, right? Uh, host a coffee morning. So invite a new neighbor uh, for a casual coffee morning. This low-key invitation can help create an opportunity to uh, have a relaxed conversation and for them to ask any questions they might have about the neighborhood. Stay away from these neighbors. <laughs> Cuckoos. Uh, include them in a community <laughs> events. So whether it's a holiday celebration, a garage sale, or a charity event, make sure you, your new neighbors are included. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Send an invite so they don't feel left out of local happenings. Uh, and a couple more here. Provide information on local services. So uh, plumbers, electricians, landscapers, people that um, you know are trusted by the neighborhood. Uh, oftentimes you have neighbors that do you know offer these Absolutely, services. Absolutely, yep. That can easily help and provide uh, some help. So, uh, And last but not least on the list, be patient and stay approachable. So everyone adjusts as, at their own pace. So be patient if your new neighbors take some time to settle in or reach out. So keep smiling, stay approachable, let them know you're uh, happy to help if needed. So don't be pushy. Just say hello. Yep. Let stay out of the way. Thing. Stay out of their way. <laughs> help them move if they need it. Otherwise, bring them food. Bring them food. So there you go. Here's a couple tips. And tomorrow's show, we'll talk about dealing with difficult neighbors peacefully. That's okay. the key. Peacefully. Yes. There's a lot, lots of ways to deal with difficult neighbors, but to do it peacefully is the, is the it's challenge. It's the lost so, art. That's right. So we'll talk about that on tomorrow's <laughs> show uh, right here on AM800. We'll take a break. We're going to come back and talk with Chris Gibb from Gibb Insurance Brokers. Uh, he'll have our tip uh, for the week. And uh, we uh, will also have our listener question segment later on in the show as well. Lots more to come with Joyce Blackmere. I'm Dan Jamis right here on the Dan Jamis Real Estate Show.